Good evening, I'm Paul Fraser and this is the latest news from Bahrain Television. His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa received at Sakhir Palace today the Chairman of the Sudanese National Council, Professor Ibrahim Ahmed Omar, and his accompanying delegation after receiving an invitation by the Speaker of the Representatives Council. Chairman of the Sudanese National Council conveyed the greetings of the Sudanese President Omar Hassan Al Bashir and his wishes for the progress and prosperity of Bahrain. His Majesty the King praised the bilateral historic brotherly relations and the progress in various fields. He stressed the importance of enhancing these relations in order to benefit both countries. His Majesty requested the Chairman of the Sudanese National Council to convey his greeting to the Sudanese President and his wishes for more progress and prosperity. He hailed the cooperation of the executive authorities between both countries, stressing the need to increase the number of visits and the exchange of expertise to enhance cooperation and coordination in regional and international events in order to serve the best interests of the Arab nation. His Majesty praised the stances of Sudan towards Bahrain and its role in defending the Arab and Islamic nations. He also lauded the role of the Sudanese community in Bahrain and their contribution to the march of progress of the kingdom. His Majesty then discussed recent regional and international developments. The Chairman of the Sudanese National Council expressed his thanks and appreciation of His Majesty's keenness to bolster bilateral relations in all areas, especially the parliamentary field. His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa received at Sakhir Palace today the dignitary Mubarak Jassim Kanu and a number of his family members. His Majesty commended the contributions of the late dignitary Abdulaziz Jassim Kanu to the economic and commercial development of Bahrain and his initiatives in humanitarian and charity work. He praised the role of Bahraini commercial families in reinforcing the investment and economic movement and supporting the national economy through their honourable stances. He also highlighted Bahraini values of cohesion and communication which reflect the principles of the people of the kingdom. For their part, the Kanu family expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the King, wishing him continued health and happiness and in addition to success in achieving the best interests of Bahrain. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, received at Gudabia Palace today the members of the National Action Charter Society, that's the NACS, led by the President of the Political Bureau, Ahmed Juma Mubarak. He urged the political parties in Bahrain to speak up and defend the kingdom from hazards that target its security and stability. He advised they stand up to any threat in all international forums and meetings. 
His Royal Highness commended the role of Bahraini political parties in spreading political awareness and reinforcing the role of civil society's institutions, whose role he also commended and stated they are essential for supporting and maintaining democracy and political work in the kingdom. He affirmed the keenness of the government to cooperate with all political parties and pointed out that local and regional challenges call for unity for the sake of maintaining security and stability, particularly due to the current international circumstances. His Royal Highness affirmed that the government understands civil society's institutions' major role in employing democracy for national purposes and benefits, which is why the government constantly seeks to provide the institutions with support. His Royal Highness commanded the honourable national role of the NACS in maintaining Bahrain's unity and stability. For their part, the President and members of NACS expressed thanks for His Royal Highness's directives and constant support which served both the Kingdom and its people. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, received today at Qudubiya Palace the Chairman of the Sudanese National Council, Professor Ibrahim Ahmed Omar, in presence of the Speaker of the Representatives Council, Ahmed Al Mullah. The Chairman of the Sudanese National Council conveyed the greetings of the Sudanese President, Omar Hassan Al Bashir, and First Vice President, Lieutenant General Bakri Salah, and their wishes for the progress and prosperity of Bahrain. His Royal Highness praised all efforts aimed at enhancing cooperation between Arab countries, highlighting the role of the legislative institutions in achieving this cooperation. His Royal Highness stressed the need for strengthening joint Arab action in international events to overcome challenges, conflicts within countries and all attempts aiming to cause unrest in Arab countries. He praised the level of cooperation between Bahrain and Sudan and affirmed keenness to further bolster cooperation with Sudan and all Arab countries. His Royal Highness hailed the stances of Sudan towards Bahrain, which affirms the bilateral, deep-rooted relations that maintain both countries' security and stability. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister then discussed topics on regional and international developments and stressed the need to adopt new methods of cooperation in order to overcome all dangers and challenges. The Chairman of the Sudanese National Council expressed thanks and appreciation for His Royal Highness's warm reception and his keenness to enhance bilateral relations, hailing the progress of the cooperation of both countries in different fields. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, received at Gurubia Palace today the Republic of Pakistan's Minister of Commerce, Karam Dasgir Khan. Pakistan's Minister of Commerce conveyed the greetings of Pakistan's Prime Minister, Mohammad Nawaz Sharif. His Royal Highness welcomed all efforts aimed at serving the commercial cooperation amongst Islamic countries and supporting its economic march, affirming Bahrain's keenness to widen the circle of cooperation with Pakistan in the fields of commerce and economy. He hailed the progress and prosperity of the cooperation between Bahrain and Pakistan in different fields. He also pointed out Pakistan's role in defending Arab and Islamic nations, highlighting Pakistan's firm stances towards Bahrain. His Royal Highness affirmed Bahrain's keenness to enhance joint coordination with Pakistan to achieve mutual goals and achieve progress in all fields. Pakistan's Minister of Commerce expressed appreciation to His Royal Highness, hailing the progress reached by the Kingdom of Bahrain in various fields. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, received today at Gurubia Palace Sheikh Duaj Fahad Duaj Al Salman Al Subah. The meeting highlighted deep rooted bilateral ties and the progress and prosperity witnessed in both countries. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister affirmed Bahrain's keenness to further bolster these relations in various fields, praising the development reached by Kuwait under the leadership of the Emir of Kuwait, His Highness Sheikh Sabah Al Ahmed Al Jabbar Al Subah. Sheikh Duaj expressed his thanks and appreciation to His Royal Highness's keenness to further enhance 
bilateral relations. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa met the Kingdom of Morocco's Minister of Handicrafts, Social Economy and Solidarity, Fatima Marwan at Rafah Palace today in the presence of the Minister of Industry, Commerce and Tourism, Zaad Al Zayani. His Royal Highness praised the growth of bilateral ties, noting that the relations have been shaped through increased cooperation and integration across various fields. He highlighted that Bahrain's commitment to increase bilateral cooperation is demonstrated by the ratification of several agreements which have directly contributed to strengthening ties. The Crown Prince also welcomed the commitment and support provided by His Majesty King Hamad Al Khalifa and King Mohammed VI of Morocco to consolidating bilateral relations and cooperation across various sectors and strengthening strategic partnerships. His Royal Highness went on to pay particular tribute to the Moroccan Bahraini Handicraft Week, which provides a series of events that showcase the handicraft industries of both nations and consolidates culture and tourism ties, in line with the support provided by the leaders of both countries. The Crown Prince added that establishment of joint exhibitions supports new opportunities for bilateral cooperation and that the exchange of expertise that takes place during the events benefits the development of both countries. His Royal Highness and the Minister also reviewed various areas of Bahraini-Moroccan cooperation, particularly within the tourism and manufacturing sectors, saying that the sectors play a key role in economic development and diversification efforts. Morocco's Minister of Handicrafts expressed her gratitude for the opportunity to meet His Royal Highness and further expressed appreciation for his support to the continued development of Bahraini-Moroccan ties across various fields. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa today met the Republic of Pakistan's Minister of Commerce, Quram Dasgir Khan, at Rafah Palace in the presence of the Minister of Industry, Commerce and Tourism, Zayed bin Rashid Al Zayani. His Royal Highness stressed the importance of capitalizing on the opportunities that exist between Bahrain and Pakistan for greater cooperation in order to build lasting strategic partnerships across a range of sectors. He noted the importance of the first Bahraini-Pakistan Business Opportunities Conference, which commenced today and expressed his hope that it will facilitate increased trade relations and new investment opportunities through the establishment of new economic and commercial projects. The Crown Prince praised the strong bilateral ties between Bahrain and Pakistan and welcomed the Pakistani Minister of Commerce to the Kingdom. He also thanked the Minister for his participation in the conference, expressing his hope that his visit to the Kingdom will present the opportunity to deliver even greater bilateral economic and trade ties. The Crown Prince stressed that both countries can build on their resilient economic performance and strong trade fundamentals in order to establish further strategic partnerships. Pakistan's Minister of Commerce expressed his hope that the first Bahrain-Pakistan Business Opportunities Conference will provide a vital platform for reinforcing Bahraini-Pakistani economic ties and facilitate further bilateral cooperation. He went on to express his appreciation to His Royal Highness the Crown Prince for his continued support to the development of Bahraini-Pakistani relations. The inaugural Pakistan-Bahrain Business Opportunities Conference, held in the Kingdom today, heralds a new era of increasing bilateral economic ties and trade. The event was very well attended, with an agenda full of presentations highlighting opportunities in both nations, delivered by a range of high-level economic development agencies and business chambers from both sides. This is the initiative, the brainchild of my ambassador, His Excellency Javed Malak. Actually, uh, the day he was posted here, he has been uh, of, of, of uh, this idea that uh, the business uh, people should be together and we should uh, create and generate more opportunities to bring them together. People from all GCC countries, people from the West, people from more than 150 people, uh, the delegates there coming from, uh, from Pakistan. So also from Saudi Arabia. So this is, you can say, uh, the multinational uh, and multicultural cultural, uh, business activity. 
Strong foundations for such a conference were laid with His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa's historic state visit to Pakistan in 2014, which was reciprocated by Pakistan's Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif in 2015. During His Majesty's visit, six agreements were signed, many of which have already been ratified. Several more agreements were signed on the sidelines of the forum today by Bahraini Minister of Industry, Commerce and Tourism Zayed Azayani and his visiting Pakistani counterpart Khuram Dagestar Khan. I believe this is a big opportunity. The business between Bahrain and Pakistan is not that big. We need to encourage the two communities. It's a mere 105 million dollars, which is very, very low. But on the other hand, it shows that we have an opportunity. The communication between Bahrain and Pakistan is very solid. We have about over 140 flights a week, which is very good. So the communication is there, transportation is there. All we have to do as a business people is to look at sectors that we could bank on. The Pakistan Bahrain Business Opportunities Conference is the first event of its kind and marks a significant milestone in the development of economic ties between the two friendly nations. Reporting for Bahrain Television, I'm Danielle Deporto. The Deputy Prime Minister and Chairman of the Ministerial Committee for Services and Infrastructure, Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, inaugurated the opening ceremony of the first phase of the Bahrain Investment Gateway Project. Present were Chairman of Al Salam Bank, Sheikh Hissa bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, a number of ministers, high state officials and those invited from both the public and private sectors. He called upon the real estate development companies to vary the development activities and broaden the scope of work to include developing land for touristic and industrial purposes to help achieve the government's drive to encourage tourism and industry. He said it's time to move to another phase which will contribute in advancing economic development, provide enough jobs for qualified citizens, directly impact the kingdom's GDP, as well as grant both short and long-term commercial rewards. All this will be achieved through developing industrial land which the kingdom has allocated some 13% of its total area, solely for industrial use. Sheikh Khaled affirmed the kingdom has what it takes to become the ideal destination for industrial investors on the Middle East level. He attributed this to Bahrain's lean and clear systems and its distinct geographical location by the sea, which the companies can use as a headquarters to launch their projects. He said it would be easy for them to transport commodities to and from Khalifa bin Salman Harbour and Salman Industrial City, which are equipped with an advanced infrastructure and a modern transportation system, utilising the location of Bahrain National Airport and King Fahad Causeway. All these are assets which will help investors employ the logistics services available and communicate efficiently with the world. He said the Kingdom has worked to provide incentives to industrial investors, such as exempting them from certain tariffs. He also added that Bahrain's signing of free trade agreements with Arab countries, United States, Singapore and EFTA countries has made it possible for investors to import and export without having to pay customs fees. The first deputy commended the Investment Gateway project, being the first of its kind in the Kingdom and providing advanced solutions for industrial investors. He thanked Manara Company, which is the real estate extension of Al Salam Bank, who runs the Bahrain Investment Gateway Project, for their initiative and in patronising the project. For his part, the General Director of Manara Company, Dr Hassan Al Bastaki, stated that this project would not have seen the light of day if it was not for the support the private sector receives from the government. He affirmed this project will help create 7,000 job opportunities and is expected to bring local and foreign investments worth 312 million US dollars. The chairman of Manara Company, Yusuf Taki, expressed thanks and appreciation to Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah for inaugurating the opening ceremony of the project and for his support under the directives of the wise leadership. The Chairman of the Representatives Council of Sudan visited the Council of Representatives of Bahrain today. More in this report with Shuk Mohammed. The Council of Representatives met with Professor Ibrahim Amar, the Chairman of the Representative Council of Sudan, and his accompanying delegation in their headquarters in Manoma today. The purpose of the meeting was to continue the enhancement of the relationship between the Kingdom of Bahrain and Sudan. Actually, this visit is very important and very essential. 
um, in order to uh, strengthen the relationship between both countries. It's very important also that we are in a region where all the eyes is on that island. So that's why we need actually to strengthen the relationships between all the countries, um, especially with Arab countries such as Sudan. Sudan, um, we have a very good relationship with them. Um, like, you know, we have relation um, financially, um, um, also commissionary, and also the, uh, politically. So um, strengthening such relationship between us and Sudan, I think it's um, uh, uh, a step, uh, you know, forward. Representatives from both countries were very pleased with the meeting and anticipated future events. It is very important uh, visit from our uh, from their country and uh, their uh, parliament to our country Bahrain. That's we have a uh, history relationship uh, first of all to say between Bahrain and Sudan, and it's not new. And uh, hopefully we discuss a lot of things that we can uh, do between Bahrain and Sudan, especially on uh, legislations, on parliament between us, and uh, on economical also. Uh, otherwise, also we, uh, Sudan, uh, support Bahrain. Bahrain and Sudan have a history of brotherly relations, and hopefully, through such events, those relations can continue to strengthen. It has definitely been an eventful morning here at the Council of Representatives for Bahrain News. I'm Shogun Mohammed. The Ministry of Housing commenced this morning the electronic dispersal of the housing units in Block 609 in Citra. This comes under the Ministry's programme to disperse 3,200 additional housing units under the directives of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier, Prince Salman bin Hamid Al Khalifa during his last visit to the Ministry. The Minister of Housing Engineer Bassem bin Yaqub al Hama affirmed that the Ministry will continue to employ its powers to execute His Royal Highness's directives to distribute housing units in a shorter time period. He said the distribution of 3,200 housing units reflects His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa al Khalifa's care and keenness in delivering these services to the citizens. al Hama pointed out that the directives of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman al Khalifa, as well as his Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa's continuous follow-up had a great effect in attaining various housing achievements. He added that the electronic dispersal of the housing units in Block 609 in Citra comes as a second phase after distributing nomination certificates for the units in June last year on the sideline of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince's laying of the foundation stone of the East Citra project. Chief Public Prosecutor Dr. Ali bin Fadol al Bouwainin inaugurated the opening of the Legal Researchers Training Course in the Public Prosecution in cooperation with the Ministry of Justice, represented by the Judicial and Legal Studies Institution. A number of experienced lecturers in legal practices will discuss different topics theoretically and practically. The training course will be concerned with the public prosecution role, types of crime, investigations and the collection and evaluation of evidence avoiding possible hardships that may face prosecutors as well as human rights. In a testament to the Bahraini model of empowering women in all spheres of society, six Bahraini executives have been included on this year's esteemed Forbes list of the 100 most powerful Arab businesswomen. Daniel Deporto spoke with one of the honorees about the achievement. The prestigious Forbes list of the 100 most powerful Arab businesswomen for 2016 is out, and it includes six Bahraini executives, including one in the top 10, namely Mona Al Moyed, managing director of YK Al Moyed and Sons at number 8. Also on the list for the second year is Suha Karzoun, chief financial officer of Mumtalakat Holding Company, the kingdom's sovereign wealth investment arm. This recognition is not a personal accolade per se. It's it's a true testament of the focus and efforts that both Mumtalakat as a company and the kingdom and as a whole uh, really exert towards promoting gender diversity as well as supporting women in leadership roles. Within Mumtalakat, women currently represent 46.4% of the total workforce and around 50% of the senior management team.
These kinds of numbers are reflective of the Bahraini leadership's proactive efforts to enhance women's empowerment in all areas of society, a mission which is ongoing. The Supreme Council for Women have done significant efforts and they've had significant su success in uh, increasing the participation of women in the workforce. Uh, we're seeing today the LMRI data actually indicates that in Bahrain in total, the total workforce uh, is approximately 33% made up of female participants. So that's those are good numbers, but we'd like to actually see them increasing. Enhancing women's role in the shaping of society is not just a moral issue. It is unequivocally linked to the successful development of nations in tangible political and economic terms. Female participation in the workforce is no longer a social issue. We're talking about it's a business issue that just makes business sense. There was a study conducted in 2012 um, that really tried to measure the impact of increasing female participation within the economy and what that means for a country's GDP. And the results are phenomenal. You will see that um, increasing female participation has an incremental impact on the economy of up to 50% increase in GDP. Uh, consistently, you've seen studies that show that businesses that are gender diverse, and specifically businesses that have gender diverse leadership positions, as well as board of directors, they've consistently outperformed their competition. They have increased sales, they have increased return on investments and return on capital. Those numbers speak for themselves. For the small nation of Bahrain to have six representatives counted amongst the 100 most powerful Arab businesswomen honors the kingdom's drive to enhance gender equality, setting a shining example to the rest of the Arab world. And the march continues. Reporting for Bahrain Television, I'm Danielle Deporto.